Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Gutierrez. I am a diagnostic radiologist specializing in breast imaging. Uh, today we'll be discussing radiologic pathologic correlation in breast imaging. A few learning objectives for today. Um, we want to understand why radiology pathology correlation plays a vital role in breast imaging. Um, we're going to review some commonly encountered pathologic entities in breast imaging, and we want to provide some management options for various breast lesions that we often see. Why is RADPATH correlation important? RADPATH correlation is important because it can prevent a delay in diagnosis of breast cancer, which is really our ultimate goal. Um, there's no imaging guided biopsy technique that's 100%, unfortunately. Um, there's always a possibility of having some type of sampling error. Um, and also, due to the many steps of uh, tissue processing of that specimen, um, calcifications can be washed away or even knocked out of the specimen. Uh, when placing the actual tissue on the slide, specimen can be distorted. So there's many different factors that can affect the interpretation um, by the pathologist. In case one, we have a 78-year-old who was recalled for increasing coarse heterogeneous calcifications. Um, these were fairly close to some very coarse benign vascular calcifications. So it was a very good pickup um, from this radiologist. Um, the recommendation was for stereotactic core needle biopsy. On core pathology, it did show atypical ductal hyperplasia with calcifications. Uh, these were considered concordant benign results, and um, they are also high risk because of the atypia. Uh, recommendation was for surgical excision. The surgical pathology did show DCIS measuring up to 3.85 centimeters. Atypical ductal hyperplasia is a proliferative ductal lesion that fulfills some but not all of the pathologic criteria uh, to be considered low-grade DCIS. Um, a surgical consult for excision is always warranted due to the atypia, um, and upgrade rates to DCIS after surgical excision can vary depending on the study that you read. Um, some studies show 18 to 56 percent of ADH upgraded to DCIS after surgery, and other studies um, show a bit lower percentage um, at 18 to 20 percent. However, still significant. Case 2 was a 33-year-old with a palpable lump and incidental loosely grouped round punctate and coarse calcifications. Um, luckily, these were found despite her extremely dense breasts. Um, I think good compression and good spot magnification views allowed for visualization of these um, faint calcifications. Uh, recommendation was for stereotactic core needle biopsy. Core pathology of these calcifications showed sclerosing adenosis with calcifications, apocrine metaplasia and cysts, and usual ductal hyperplasia. Uh, these results were concordant benign. Um, recommendation was for six-month follow-up. Benign concordant recommendations. Um, so there are really no rules. Um, for management of benign concordant lesions. Um, you can have uh, surgical excision of the high-risk calcifications or high-risk masses. Um, Six-month follow-up could be obtained, and then you can also resume annual screening. Um, however, um, it's really personal preference. Case 3 is a 66-year-old female recalled for a new focal asymmetry with faint calcifications. Um, as you can see on the mammogram image, um, the calx 
um, are predominantly faint, um, but there is one kind of coarse rounded calcification that kind of pops out um, and um, catches your eye. Um, the asymmetry had very indistinct margins, um, partially obscured by surrounding breast tissue, so this was a very good call. Ultrasound findings showed a subtle solid mass with calcifications within. Um, it was uh, not obvious whatsoever, it appears. Um, it blends in quite well with the surrounding breast tissue. Um, luckily, this radiologist did recommend ultrasound-guided core needle biopsy of the subtle lesion. Um, core pathology showed DCIS, and these results are, of course, concordant malignant. So for DCIS, in the majority of cases, about 62 to 98%, depending on which study you read, um, DCIS is detected due to the presence of calcifications on mammogram. Um, in 2 to 23% of cases, DCIS can manifest as a mass or an asymmetry. In this case, luckily, the lesion did have both, um, so this was a very good call. On case four, we have an 81-year-old who is recalled for a new irregular mass with calcifications. Um, as you can see, the margins are angular, um, somewhat partially obscured, but we do see some very faint calcifications in the region of the mass as well. On ultrasound, um, there was a subtle solid mass with po prominent posterior shadowing. Um, the shadowing really um, kind of gives the mass away more than the margins. Um, the margins are um, quite indistinct and irregular. Uh, a recommendation for ultrasound-guided core needle biopsy was placed, thankfully, and a core pathology result of benign breast tissue was provided. Um, however, given the irregular features on mammogram and ultrasound, uh, these results were considered discordant benign. recommendation was for a repeat stereotactic core needle biopsy of the mass. Um, the core pathology did show invasive ductal carcinoma on repeat core needle biopsy, um, and uh, there was also um, some minor components of in situ um, carcinoma and uh, focus of ADH as well. So these are considered concordant malignant results, thankfully, after the repeat needle biopsy. In case five, we have a 78-year-old female recalled for a new, very subtle asymmetry, which is partially seen on just a single view due to the far posterior location on mammogram. As you can see on the mammogram image, the margins are very indistinct and ill-defined. Um, if anything, the fact that she had a very fatty breast um, was very helpful. Um, if she was a very extremely dense breast, um, this would likely have been missed, unfortunately, um, unless she had 3D imaging. On ultrasound, we did see a subtle solid mass with indistinct margins. Um, the recommendation was for ultrasound-guided core needle biopsy um, based on the indistinct margins on mammogram as well. Um, although this did blend in quite well on ultrasound. Um, core pathology showed benign breast tissue. Um, however, um, this was considered discordant benign um, due to the fact that um, it did appear quite mass-like on ultrasound and mammogram. Recommendation was for repeat biopsy with tomosynthesis guidance. Um, on core pathology, it did show invasive ductal carcinoma grade three. Um, these results are concordant malignant. Biopsy modality um, discussion here. Um, so it's a subtle mass on ultrasound. Um, so really you should let the lesion visibility influence your biopsy modality. Um, a repeat biopsy is always warranted, of course, if something is discordant uh, or if you feel the lesion has been missed. Um, establishing a diagnosis prior to surgery with a repeat needle biopsy is always preferred.
on case six, we have a 40-year-old who was recalled for, from her baseline screening exam for pleomorphic calcifications. Uh, recommendation was for core needle biopsy. As you can see on the mammogram, um, you have very fine pleomorphic punctate and some round calcifications, very tightly clustered. Um, these were very superficial, so they're a bit tricky. Um, but as you can see, the morphology kind of dictates management in this case, rather than the location of the calcifications. Core pathology showed benign breast tissue. Um, no specific pathologic findings were seen and no calcifications were seen on the specimen. These are considered discordant benign results. Um, on post biopsy MAMO, the clip was seen about one centimeter from the target. Um, so that should always raise your eyebrow a little bit. Uh, recommendation was for repeat stereotactic core needle biopsy. On repeat biopsy, pathology showed DCIS high nuclear grade. Um, as you can see in the specimen radiograph, there are calcs present, thankfully, in this specimen. Um, and this resulted in concordant malignant results. missed lesions. Um, this should always be suspected um, if, of course, pathology returns as discordant. Um, rad path correlation is so important um, to prevent um, discordance and to prevent you from missing these cancers. Um, repeat biopsy is always warranted if a missed lesion is suspected. Um, there's nothing that should stop you from tissue sampling of an area that looks suspicious on mammogram or ultrasound. Calcifications are present in approximately 55% of non-palpable breast cancers. Uh, the probability of malignancy of these calcs um, is really determined by several factors. Uh, what are the morphologic features of the calcs? Uh, what is the distribution of them? And are they new? Um, so in this case, although they were superficial, um, they still did have very suspicious morphologic features on spot magnification views. So there's always a red flag raised uh, when calcifications with a high PPV um, come back with benign pathology results. So if you do have suspicious calcs that demonstrate punctate, amorphous, coarse, heterogeneous, fly, fine pleomorphic or fine linear branching calcifications, um, and they come back benign on path, of course, resampling should always be considered um, because that um, high PPV um, is concerning. So uh, it's very important to always correlate rad path after biopsy results. On case seven, we have a 73-year-old female recalled for a small speculated mass. Um, this little guy was very tiny um, on the corner of a spot view, but as you can see, you do have um, tiny speculations and um, it is asymmetric, and um, thankfully, the mass was dense enough, despite its small size, to be seen uh, fairly well on TOMO. Ultrasound findings showed a taller than wide mass with indistinct margins and posterior shadowing. Um, the recommendation was for ultrasound-guided corn needle biopsy uh, based on the suspicious morphologic features. Uh, core pathology did return as grade two invasive lobular carcinoma. These are concordant malignant pathology results. Post biopsy mammogram showed the clip six centimeters superior to the screening detected mass, however. Um, so recommendation was for tomosynthesis guided core needle biopsy of the mass that was seen on screening. Core pathology of the screening detected mass um, returned as grade 
one to two invasive ductal carcinoma with ductal and lobular features. And this was concordant malignant. As you can see, the clip is six centimeters from this new biopsy site. Um, so it appears that the lesion that was seen on ultrasound was actually a separate um, incidental finding that um, happened to be cancer as well. So this patient unfortunately had two malignant sites. Um, it's always important to make sure that your ultrasound um, biopsy mass correlates with what you originally saw on the mammogram. Um, thankfully, biopsy clip placement will help you determine whether the correct area was biopsied. So it's always important to obtain that post-biopsy diagnostic mammogram just to confirm concordance with what you saw um, on the ultrasound and to make sure that the correct spot was biopsied. As I mentioned, confirming clip placement at the target lesion is always imperative. Um, it's necessary to pursue the initial targeted mammogram finding if it appears that you've biopsied a separate suspicious area um, based on what you saw on ultrasound. In case eight, we have a 71-year-old who was recalled for new coarse heterogeneous calcifications. Here, um, they are very coarse, as you can see on mammogram. Um, fat necrosis can also have a similar appearance. Um, these are tightly clustered. However, they're also new. Um, so anytime you have new calcifications, it's always something that you should investigate further, even if they do appear quite coarse on mammogram. On ultrasound, a wider than tall circumscribed mass was seen in this region. Ultrasound guided core needle biopsy was recommended. On core pathology, um, they had a fiber adenoma with no calcifications. Um, so that is your red flag. Um, what we were targeting initially was calcifications and the fact that our tissue sample did not have any um, kind of makes us wonder whether the correct area was sampled under ultrasound. So these were considered discordant benign pathology results. In case eight, uh, the recommendation was for repeat biopsy with stereotactic core needle biopsy targeting the calcs that were initially seen. Core pathology did show DCIS, and this is considered concordant malignant. If there is no post biopsy mammogram, um, it's always important to correlate pathology with initial imaging. Where are uh, the calcifications in the specimen? Um, do, you, do they see any or report any on their pathology report? Um, uh, is it representative of the target that you initially saw on the screening? Um, and the number of calcifications that are seen on the specimen, is there one or two? Is there um, several? Um, if there are one or two calcs or zero calcs, of course, then you always have to wonder about sampling error as well. Um, again, it's necessary to pursue the initial targeted finding if the biopsy clip is not deposited at the target, as what we saw in the previous case, where the patient had actually two malignant lesions. In conclusion, um, radiologic pathologic correlation after imaging guided breast biopsy can help decrease a delay in breast cancer diagnosis. Um, ensuring pathology findings correlate with imaging findings and recommending next steps in management is an important role for breast imaging radiologists. Um, so part two of this lecture will review cancer mimickers um, that should be provided shortly. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for listening.